The top wholesaling scripts that actually get wholesaling deals. What is up guys, Zach in here. Rick in here. And in today's video, we are actually gonna give you scripts that really do get wholesaling deals. Scripts, when you talk to sellers, you can actually get them closed and actually make money in wholesaling real estate. The honest truth is you got to pay two or $3,000 just to get the scripts to learn actually how to wholesale houses. And the honest truth here is if you can use these scripts and just use them with your sellers, you have a high chance of having success. If you're nervous talking to sellers or just don't know what to say when it comes to having a conversation with your acquisitions or your marketing, this is going to be the complete video for you. So the first thing we need to talk about is when you're just talking to somebody in general that says the word, Words, yes, I actually do want to sell my property. This is when the scripts start because really up to this point, that's a lot of the hard part, right? Just finding people that want to sell their house. That is the struggle. That is what we're working on. And that is where we do a lot of our marketing for just to find people that just want to get rid of the property for cash. Now, once you're cold calling, you're texting, whatever type of marketing, direct mail, they say, yes, I'm looking to sell my house. This is when we have to start our simple script. Our simple script is really easy. It is four letters. That is it. M C. MCTP. Again, that is MCTP. MCTP stands for motivation, condition, time frame, and price. So let's kind of go over what a general conversation looks like. So I'm doing M motivation. Yeah, I guess I am interested in selling my house. Okay. I mean, why would you be looking to sell it? That's M motivation. Let's kind of talk about C condition. So yes, I am looking to sell my property. Well, Zach, that's great. Can you tell me a little bit more about like the condition of the house? What's going on with it? Any upgrades you've done? What do you mean by condition? When's the last time you've done a renovation? Have Is the roof updated? How's the lawn? You know, you got a general idea of what the overall condition of the property is. What, what would you rate it as? Perfect, right? T, time frame. Hey, I'm looking to sell my house. Okay. Well, I mean, what's an ideal time frame if you're looking to sell it? Like in a perfect world, if you were going to get rid of the house, when would you sell it? Honestly, it would take us about 45 to 60 days. We already got a place we're going to be going. We're going to live with my aunt and uh, it was still a lot of stuff to pack. So a 45 perfect scenario, but like, let's just say 60 days max. Does that sound good? Perfect. Right. And the last one is P for price. We want to get an idea of where the seller's number is roughly lying to see if it's worth vesting and going forward. So yeah, I'm looking to sell my property. So is that, what do you think you need to get for it? What do you mean? If you had to put a number on it to get your house sold and not have to deal with any of the headaches of dealing with the realtors and get, and get it sold within that 60 days we talked about, what kind of number would that be? I don't know. I mean, 150 grand. We can talk about it. So what I'd like to do is set an appointment to come by and take a look at the house. I don't know if that number works to be quite honest with you, but are you open to me coming by and uh, spend a little time with you and checking out the house in person? Sure. Awesome. That was P price and we got a lot more scripts to go over, but that was MCTP. Now, the main part about these scripts that we need to talk about is be yourself. Confidence is going to be the best part about these scripts that we're talking about today, because if you can be yourself and use the scripts with your own personality, it will lead you to the best wholesaling success. So I want everybody to understand watching this is how you say something is much more important than what you actually say. And what do I mean by that is for you to be like human, for you to be yourself, for you to be authentic, you have to talk with emotions. Now, some of you doing this virtual, that's fine. It's even more important that you focus on tonality. Tonality means you know when to turn it on and when to turn it down. Speed, if your seller talks fast, you have to talk fast. If they talk really slow, you have to talk slow. And pauses are just like talking. When you pause, people are going to assume you think, especially if you're doing it virtually. Now, for those of you in person, this is where almost 70% of your communication is going to be nonverbal. It's how you stand, where you sit, how you make eye contact with them. The reality is they're only going to remember your first impression, the first thing you said to them, and how you wrapped it up. Basically, how you say it in between is going to make the final impression for you. And I want you to understand that. You are not a robot. AI is not going to close your sellers for you. It's so important how you deliver your message and you do it in a very realistic approach. The best way to do it is be yourself, be authentic, and tune in on your sellers. And you can mimic a lot of their behavior. And they go, man, this, this guy or this gal is just like me. This is the art of mimicking your sellers. Don't forget this step. So kind of the next part here is, 
is when we get that MCTP, we are going to need to go and set this appointment. And the best way to set the appointment is just to have a candid conversation with them, right? Kind of like what you said with the live role play right there, right? Hey, Mr. Seller, thank you for telling me more about the property. What I want to do is just see if there's a time that works for you for me to go out and actually look at the house because I'm interested in buying it. I wish I could tell you there's a super secret duper script of like setting the appointment. That's super crazy. But just say, hey, is there a time for me to come by to look at it? I just, I hate to tell you, like, that's it. There's all these crazy gurus scripts, boot camps, webinars, just ask them what's a good time for me to go and see the property. Simple as that. But the next part after this is the very important part, right? This is actually conditioning the seller. This is when the rubber meets the road. If you are not conditioning your seller, you're going to be in a world of hurt here. The point of conditioning your seller is to make sure when you're on that appointment, when you're actually trying to go out here and close the deal, that the seller can either say yes or no. The worst possible scenario when it comes to a conversation, when it comes to actually closing a wholesaling real estate deal is if the seller says, maybe maybe right? If you get a maybe, you're going to be in what we call, you know, the friend zone and wholesaling, right? You're kind of, yeah, maybe, but maybe not. I'm not really going to give you an answer right now and just leave you in limbo and it's not good, right? When I give an offer to a seller, I want them to either say yes or no. A no is not bad. Fine. I get no's all the time. If I get a yes, of course, that's a great deal. But a maybe is basically a no, right? Like you're not getting the deal. And a maybe is being set up for them to just go to someone else. And so what you want to do is eliminate this maybe. And the best way to do it is what we call conditioning the seller. Conditioning the seller is a very easy thing. Basically, the way I explain it is, hey, Mr. Seller, I don't want to waste your time or my time, Mr. Seller. Before I actually go out here and see the property myself, I want to make sure you're ready to make a yes or no decision on selling the property. I only go out and see these properties once. I'm not here to go a million times through the house. I don't want to waste your time or my time. So are you ready to make a yes or no decision? decision on selling. Easy, simple like that, right? Now, the way you do it's slightly different, but it's pretty much the same one, right? So Mm -hmm. how would you condition the seller? You got to understand the predication on doing this. It's you're holding the seller accountable to their word. Most people, when there's two people in the room and you ask them to answer a yes or no question, they commit to it. Nine times out of 10, they will. So you're basically using that trick of making them accountable. Mr. Seller, I appreciate you taking the time to spend with me today. Listen, I'm going to come out and take a look at the house. I'm going to get to know you and your family a little bit better and get the details on the house. And at the end of our conversation, you're going to have a decision to make. So you're going to say, listen, I love working with Rick. It's a yes, I'm 100% in, or I don't like what you offered and I don't think it's going to work for me. And it's a hard no. Either way, you're going to make a decision. And I promise you this, if you can make that yes or no decision, I will help you regardless if I buy your house or not. Is it fair to say you can answer a yes or no when we're done with our appointment? And then you just shut up. You have to let them answer it. And you need more than a head nod. You need a verbal connection. Once you have it, they don't want to look you in the eye and give you a maybe because that's where you can just basically tell them, listen, if they do a maybe, I go, remember our agreement up front, we both shook hands as gentlemen. You said you give me your yes or no. We're at that point. That's it, guys. You're just holding them accountable for their word, but you got to look them in the eye and you got to spit it out. You can do it the exact way I did or Zach does, but you just want to make them accountable. The last thing you want to do is wind up in the friend zone because you waste so much time. And honestly, no, sometimes they do you a huge favor. So make sure you use the strategy before you go on the appointment or before you get into the negotiations. And then when it comes to actually closing the deal, we have a couple closing lines we like. Number one for me is personally the good cop, bad cop method. The way that I close this is saying something on the lines like, hey, Mr. Seller, you know, I was talking to Rick about this property and he told me he wanted to buy it for around 160 60,000. So I shut up there to see the reaction. They say, whoa, 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 that's way too low. Kick you out of the house. Hey, I know. He wants to buy things for super low. I totally get it. But that was just what he said. I'm just letting you know. That's not what my offer is. You just want to kind of gauge him to negotiate from there. But there's other really good closing strategies you can be using too, besides this good cop, bad cop method. For example, one of Rick's favorites is the volley method. So how would you get the seller to get the price first so you can actually get that deal done in negotiations? Well, with the volley method, just picture a typical volleyball game. The ball has to go back and forth over the net and one side serves and the other returns. And you don't stop until somebody drops the ball or basically in our case scenario answers with an affirmative answer. So I'll give you an example and I'll show you guys. I said, Mr. Seller, what price do you need to be at to get rid of this house? I don't know. Listen, I know you don't know, but if you did know, what do you think that price would be? You're the one who came here, right? You're trying to buy my house. I get it. And I know you don't know exactly, but if you had to give it a ballpark figure, what would you say it is? I, I really don't know. I'm giving you permission to give me your best guess and I'm not going to hold you accountable. But honestly, I just kind of needed to know a number that you and your wife have discussed to uh, sell the property. I know, 120,000. Okay, was that so hard? Was that? 
You're good. See, the, the reality is, listen, it's not going to work on everybody. And if you can overcome two objections, you can typically get the response you're looking to get out of people. Remember, I'm looking for a reaction. I'm looking for a number because I have to find out where he is to decide if we're even in the ballpark. And the reality is I'm just repeating the questions and I'm just serving it back. When you serve it back, they feel obligated to answer you. It is a human psychological thing that when somebody asks you a question, you guys answer it, even if you don't want to answer it. So by using the volley method, it allows me to elicit a response, either good or bad. But guys, this is where negotiations start. Your alternative is say, Zach, what's the cheapest you'll sell me that property? And is that the best you can do? That's how I was taught. And it worked back then. But people are more sophisticated now by using the volley method. You just keep overcoming their no, you rephrase it and you put it back. Now, after three or four times, they will get frustrated and answer you. But it's okay, guys. This is how negotiations start. Because when they respond, to you, you have to respond back. So yep. if you figure out how to get your words right and serve it back, and most of the time, if you just play this back, I just rephrase the words and I serve it back over the net. The volley method works fantastic. And then really from there, that's our script for talking to sellers. It's not crazy. I mean, you're going to get some objections here and there. If you really want to get the full objections playlist, just go to freelancing.com or freelancing course. But really some of the most common objections are ones that we overcome on a daily basis. I think one of the most common ones is what's your offer? What's your offer? What's your offer? Right. And we get that all the time. Right. Uh And so I like using the car analogy. I think this is the one we really need to focus on for most wholesalers watching this because that's one. if you're calling, texting on the phone, somebody, they're going to be like this. And so we're going to make Rick into a 98 year old man who just moved down from the Bronx or, or Brooklyn. You know, this is the average person, older person in Florida, right? They move from Brooklyn or the Bronx and they're looking to sell their house and they're to the point. They're sweet people, but when it comes to negotiating, holy moly, they're aggressive. And if I'm dealing with someone from New York in Florida for a deal, they either love the Mets and they like negotiating. They like doing it hard. So I'm telling you, if they're a Mets fan, they, they've dealt with a lot of struggle in their life. And so they take it out on me, I think. So uh, let's kind of go through that. You are the 88-year-old man from Brooklyn who's looking to sell his house now in Florida. Let's see it. So, hi, is this uh, Jonathan? This is Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan. Are, are you the owner of that house on uh, 123 Main Street? I sure am. Okay, what, what kind of accent is that? That's uh, that's like it's a, a southern. year old man. That's an 88-year-old man. You do not know the Brooklyn accent. Okay, but, go. you know, let's use your regular voice here. Okay. okay. They kind of got that that rough and tough, <sighs> you know, it's like Sopranos, but it's like Italian, you know. It's, it's it. kind of, you know, that's like Jersey. Okay, so we're going to kind of use this, right? Okay. So, are you interested in selling that property? Yeah, I'm interested, but what's your offer? I really want to know the number. Like my offer for you to yeah, buy a property? Yeah, give me your offer right now. Okay, well, let me ask you a question. Have you ever bought in a car? I bought a few. Okay, I mean, when you bought that car, did you have to test drive it? Of course I did. Yeah, I mean, just like me. I mean, I'm an old school guy. I don't know if you're old school like me, but like- I'm just old. No, I mean, I'm an old school guy. So like, just like buying a car, I ain't going to go buy a car from one of these crazy websites, right? I'm going to meet the person. I'm going to see the car. I'm going to drive it. I'm going to look at the hood, touch it, feel it, make sure that's a legitimate car to put on a test drive and then I'm going to buy it. So what I want to do is actually go by and look at the house, look at it, see if it's something that actually fits me and my partner's criteria and go and buy it. I can't be a man of my word and tell you, I can give you this offer right now over the phone because I got to see it. Okay. So when's a good time for me to go and see the property? I come by uh, anytime after 12 o'clock tomorrow. Okay, perfect. I mean, and then I get in the MCTP from there, but I'm just like, it's not that complicated, right? And he was being less aggressive than the average New Yorker type guy because they're like, what's your offer? What's your offer? What's your offer? Uh, But really that's how you do it. You can't be so stressed out with this, right? You got to deal with it calmly and you got to remember what makes a fire bigger when you add more gasoline to it, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you fight fire with fire, the fire just gets bigger. And so if you're being super angry and aggressive with me, if I'm cool and chill, you are less likely to be more angry with me because there's nothing really fueling your fire, right? And you're looking how New Yorkers, a lot of them do it. No offense, New Yorkers, but like they like someone likes being aggressive. They'd be aggressive back and they just go neck for neck with each other. If you're calm, it'll help them a lot more. But guys, these are our standard scripts we're talking to sellers. If you want to learn more of these, just go to free wholesaling course, freewholesaling.com. And remember, these are scripts that work if you are confident. Make sure you practice, make sure you actually use them, and you'll have wholesaling success. Guys, if you got any value from this video, do me a favor. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe. We'll see you soon. This is Zach in signing out. Rick in signing out. Have a blessed one. See you guys.